TV, it's all aboard for the last in this series of trains. to an unusual edition of Highway. Unusual because we're taking a trip on a train. Behind me is Wharf Station in Towin on the Merionith coast of North Wales, which means we're back in the age of steam, for this is the home of the Tallaght Lynn Railway. The Tallaght Lynn is one of the great little trains of Wales. Its many hundred supporters would say the greatest, not least because it's the oldest. It was founded in 1865 to carry slate from the surrounding hills down to the coast. But it's always carried passengers too, today over 60,000 buy their tickets to ride the seven mile journey up the valley, a trip these trains have been taking for 126 years. It's a remarkable success story, but what's equally remarkable is the way that success has been achieved. For the Tarnetland Railway wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for the fellowship of hundreds of volunteers from all over Britain who come along to help out. One of these volunteers is Eddie Castellan. Eddie, I believe the Tarnetland Preservation Society is the oldest one in the world, is that right? Yes, that's right. We, uh, it was formed in 1950, and at that time no one had done anything remotely like that before. And after we'd done that, many of us have followed in our, in our footsteps, and uh, see where we are still today. So there were a number of people who would become aware of the railway's presence, mainly, I think, from, from the Midlands, because it's a, a traditional holiday area down here. And uh, they eventually got together and uh, got in contact with the widow of the previous owner and uh, worked out a scheme whereby the railway could be taken over and run by volunteers, which it has, has been ever since. You've been a volunteer for many years, haven't you? So how, how did you start? Um, <coughs> like, I think, quite a few people. I was brought here as a child. Parents brought me down uh, here from a very young age onwards. And uh, I think I've been to Towin Beach about twice since 1965. <laughs> uh, I discovered there, was, there were trains and that if you joined the, the society, you could, you could ride on these trains. And uh, that was it for me. And uh, as I got a little older, I was able to, I found you could, you could uh, join and help to run the railway. And uh, yes, I, I never wanted to look at the sea after that. <laughs> sort of bug gotcha. I think so. As I travel on the great highway, these prayers I offer you each and every day. I pray you give me a sunny morning, framed in a clear blue sky, songbirds to sing at dawning. With them my cares will fly, raindrops to be my diamonds, rustling of trees my song, fireside to warm and welcome me all winter long, as I travel far.
time to get going. But first, let's meet the two men who are the driving force behind this program. Di Jones and Di Jones. Two Di Joneses. Not by any chance related, are you? <laughs> yes, uh, father and son, Harry. Yeah. So, life in the Thalberton Railway runs in the family, then? Oh, it does, yeah. There's four generations. Of it. Four generations? Yeah. How long have you been with the railway now? Uh, 35 years. 35 years. Yeah. Now, young David, die too. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me it takes 10 years to learn how to manage what it is. You must start in your pram. Well, yes, as, as a young uh, lad, I came up here with my mum and getting interested in the railway and all my school holidays were taken up working on the line and I slowly gone up the grade to a driver now. So you're a fully fledged driver? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, like my father. And you've got a young boy too, I mean, how old is he? Uh, he's two, nearly. Is he? Oh, so, grandson. Yeah, grandson. grandson. So he's next, is he? Yes, <laughs> yes. train man. Yeah. Yeah. Great, well, I'm in good hands. Thanks for talking That's to right. me. Yes. Right, off we go, folks. Over to you, Madam God. <whistles> hey, wait for me. Now, age is all that age can ride the little trains. Not a dream, but living, seeming glory once again. Bright painted little engines, wheels riding narrow rails. Piston steaming, brasses gleaming, bright little train to the waves. Sue Whitehouse, yes. you're on guard today. Yes. Now they say that this railway has had more than just an influence on your life, hasn't it? Just tell us about it. It's been part of my life for as long as I can remember. My parents were coming here as volunteers before I was born. I'm, <laughs> I'm their only child. Yeah. So it's, it's if you can't beat them, join them in a big way <laughs> for me. So uh, what are your duties as a guard, for example? Duties as the guard start fairly early in the morning, preparing the train. And by the train, I mean everything but the locomotive. I have to make sure that carriages are clean and safe for passengers, bring them down to the wharf, and the guard and usually one or two assistants check tickets before we leave wharf, and it's our business to ensure the best conditions of travel for the travelling public. Not for you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Come this way, Sir Harry. You'll find it's warmer in here. Yeah. What goes on here? All sorts of things. <laughs> let me introduce you to my husband, Roger. Hello, Roger. The, rail the railway introduced us. Let me introduce you. <laughs> nice How do you do? <laughs> it's a bit different from your paid employment. You're a lecturer, aren't you? That's right, yeah. yes. So you, you find this a, a, a great break from the Yes, work. It, yeah. the, the different type of work is, is very refreshing. I can come here for the weekend and I can forget about any problems that are uh, bothering me with my job and, yeah. uh, and, and then go back refreshed and ready to start new on Monday morning. So what brings you back here year after year? It was the railway that brought us together as a family. My wife and I met here as working volunteers. Um, so it's part of our family life. Um, I enjoy all the different aspects of working on the railway and also I have met a lot of people and gained a lot of friends, which I wouldn't otherwise. Of course, your two girls help out here too, don't they? That's right, yes. The, they've grown up with the railway in, in the background, as it were, and uh, perhaps one day they will follow us into active voluntary work. They're not old enough yet. Even though you might never have ridden on this line, you've probably heard about it, thanks to the Reverend Wilbur Mordry who wrote the wonderful tales of Thomas the Tank Engine, Sir Handel, Scarlowy and Peter Sam, which has united children of all ages for nearly 50 years. Mr. Audrey, introducing Thomas the Tank Engine to the world must have changed your life. How did it all start? At the age of three, 1943, my son caught measles, and he had to be kept amused. And we'd exhausted all the entertainment value of the nursery rhymes we knew. But there were two which still rang a bell with him. One was, early in the morning, down at the station, all little engines standing in a row. That always brought a delighted chorus. Up, up, jump, <laughs> up we go. So for fun, I drew some little engines standing in a row. I can't draw for toffee, so I do them the easiest way, head on. 
Yeah. Which led to a blank for the smoke boxes. Yeah. And again, for fun, I put in little faces. A stern face, a cross face, a sad face, a laughing face. But because he wasn't feeling up to much, it was the sad face which, uh, which uh, hooked him. And he said, why is he sad, Daddy? Out of the top of my head, I said, because he's old and he hadn't been out for a long time. <laughs> What's his name, Daddy? Edward. Yeah. Again out of the top of my yeah. head. And so, by question and answer, the first story in the first book, Edward's Day Out, was just a simple little Cinderella story. That came out in 1945. And uh, it was a complete success. Some of them were actually written about this line, weren't they? Which ones are those? Oh, those are to be about the Scar Lowy Railway. Now that dates from 1954, after I'd been down here and done a stint in voluntary work on the line. So what, what do you think the children learn from the stories? Well, they learn, I think, that antisocial behavior always brings a, its own retribution. To handle one of the uh, the bossy engines, yes. generally uh, finds himself in trouble. Gets his comeuppance, does yes. he? <laughs> and when you first wrote these stories in wartime, do you think the children were different now from what they were then? No, I think children, basically, they are very much the same. Otherwise, they wouldn't continue to to pester their parents to buy Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> books. Very true. This is Doll Box Station. Halfway up the line is a favourite stop because of the woods that surround us. Woods that conceal a wonderful view. Now for a wonderful stop. Because this is where we welcome a singer who one day will be a big star. Her name is Rebecca Evans. <laughs>
Rebecca Evans singing Someday My Heart Will Awake. Time now to meet someone who's a regular passenger on the railway, the vicar of Tauin, the Reverend Martin Riley. Martin, there's a great deal of support between the railway and the church. What form does it take? It takes all sorts of forms, uh, but, you know, basically the whole thing has started from the fellowship that was built up in the town. Um, the sort of spirit of togetherness and of the lads together doing things that seems to have kept with the church through the ages here and with the town. And it's a mirror image, of course, of what the Preservation Society is about. People with a purpose working together. Half the people that are in the 8 o'clock service in the summer are these railway people coming to the early morning before they start with their day's activities and that. That's nice. So what, what benefit do you think the railway brings to the area? Lifeblood. All sorts of people from all sorts of walks of life. Interest, life, money, which we need during yes. the winter. Uh, all sorts of benefits come through it. Great. Thanks for talking to us, Martin. Thank you very much. Martin's church back in Towin is dedicated to Cadvan, one of the many Welsh Celtic saints associated with this area. And it's there that we go now to hear the local youth choir sing about a young girl whose determination 200 years ago has won her an enduring place in Welsh hearts. <laughs>
Well, that was the Dissenny Choir singing about a young girl called Mary Jones. As they were singing, we come further up the line to a place called African Alwyn, where we're going to hear more about her. Bethan, tell us something about this very determined young girl, Mary Jones. Well, she lived not far from here in Tanvi Hangal of Penan, and she wanted her own Bible in Welsh, and she knew that she could get to an in Bala with Mr. Thomas Charles, so she decided to walk the 25 miles over to Bala barefoot. She'd oh. saved for six years to get this yeah. Bible. And when she got there, he didn't have any to spare for her, but he gave her his own because he was so impressed by the fact that she'd walked so, so what far. So what did Thomas Charles do after he'd met her? Well, with some influential friends in London, he founded the British and Foreign Bible Society, and their aim was to make sure that people who wanted Bibles could get one in their own language. That was, that was through her? Yes. Wonderful, yes. isn't it? So what happened to Mary in later life? Well, she married a weaver, Thomas Lewis, and she had eight children, and she lived uh, to the age of 82, and she lived in a village not far from where she was born. Is she still in members here? Oh, yes. There are two memorials here, one in the cottage where she was born and the other in the village where she lived her later life. Yeah. Wonderful story, isn't it? Yes. Thanks for telling us. Thank you. A remarkable story about a remarkable lady whose trust in God proves that faith can indeed move mountains. That was the last in the present series about trains. Next Thursday, enjoy the fun, flavour and excitement of Irv 96.